Andrew Forrest pushes for ammonia-powered cargo ships. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because I want to look at well this idea or this push that Andrew Forrest, Twiggy, is pushing for ammonia-powered cargo ships. Now this is quite, well, quite a significant contributor, the cargo ships, to, well, our impact on the entire planet. Now, this is live shipping data. You can see here just how much stuff is shipped all over the world. There are advantages to having such an interconnected world. It means everything is so cheap and readily available. This is why it's cost-effective to get something from one part of the world to the other. Sure, shipping prices have spiked, but they're coming back down. You know, con- stuff, Getting stuff manufactured to scale overseas and putting it in a container still is competitive much more competitive than getting things manufactured here in Australia. So let's have a look at this article, guys, because this, if we can actually reduce the embodied energy in transporting goods around, in moving raw materials and moving goods and services, that's going to have a tremendous impact on the pollution that we're adding to the environment more than anything else. And uh, because honestly, I think a lot of the stuff that we're doing is tokenistic. This is real. And this could make a huge difference. And now for those of you that are regulars of the channel, I've had a quiet last few days with content here because of the new baby. It's just been hectic. Everything's good, but you know how it is with a new baby, guys. It's been a bit crazy. So I've just taken a few days off the channel and focused focused on the little one. So let's, let's look at this, guys. Hopefully it's all back to normal now. You know, by the sixth child, I start, I have to stay up late at night for the first time. <laughs> Rachel usually usually protected me, but uh, didn't not quite this time. Anyway, so mining billionaire Andrew Forrest said he aims to create the world's first ammonia-powered ship before the end of next year, part of an ambitious plan to run all his company's fleet on a carbon-free version of the fuel. Okay. This is just the first, Forrest chairman and founder of Fortescue Metals Group said in an interview. We have about 100 ships on the water and we'll be converting all our own ships over to green ammonia at the earliest possible opportunity, well within this decade. The ship itself is tiny, with a transportation capacity that's less than a one-hundredth of the size of some of the world's largest bulk commodity carriers. Ammonia is considered a cleaner, possible replacement in the future for the oil-derived marine fuels that almost exclusively power shipping today. The announcement came on Transportation Day of COP26, the ongoing climate summit. Okay. Okay. Now, let's have a look at ammonia shipping. So this is a a press release from March, the world's first high-temperature ammonia-powered fuel cell for shipping. So let's have a look through this, guys, because this is... New tech can make a difference. Fantastic. So every year, hundreds of millions of tons of carbon dioxide are emitted through maritime transport, causing serious harm to the climate. As scientists around the world test new propulsion methods capable of replacing fuel oil in ships. Fraunhofer researchers are working as part of an international consortium to develop ammonia-based fuel cells. When used as fuel for ships with electrical engines, ammonia... Is, an, is as eco-friendly as hydrogen, but easier and safer to handle. And, well, I know that. We used to have it for the, the printing machines my family had. You know, the whole, um, all the drafties will remember this, where you run your uh, ammonia-impregnated imp- paper through UV light, and it takes a print of what you've drawn on the trace paper. We had that running to make plans in the house as a child, so the whole house stunk, but, you know, it's just the way to do it. Anyway, at present, hydrogen is the primary focus in the area of sustainable energy. There are plans in place to use hydrogen to fuel buses, commercial vehicles, and even cars. However, the Fraunhofer Institute for Microengineering and Microsystems, IMM, in Mainz, is working on another another promising possibility. As part of the SHIP FC project, the Fraunhofer Institute is collaborating with 13 European consortium partners to develop the world's first ammonia-based fuel cells for shipping. Their researchers are responsible for for developing the catalytic converter 
which prevents the uh, production of emissions that would harm the climate. Maritime transport is a contributor to greenhouse gas emissions, according to information provided by the German Environment Agency. Maritime transport on the world's oceans is currently responsible for approximately six point, uh, sorry, 2.6% of global CO2 emissions. Okay, this is higher than Australia. Australia, we're about 1.5%, everyone. And everyone is saying, you know, how guilty we should feel and how we need to do everything. Just shows you here, bigger impact. Bigger impact. There you go. That's what you're being targeted. So, in 2015, 293 million tons of CO2 were emitted, and that figure increases every year. Clearly, countermeasures are urgently needed. The SHIP FC project is intended to prove that the new emission-free propulsion technology works safely, reliably, and smoothly, even in large ships and on long voyages. The project is being coordinated by NCE Maritime Clean Tech from Norway, an organization that aims to develop eco-friendly technologies in the maritime technology sector. The advantages of ammonia. Ammonia is primarily known, primarily known for its use as a fertilizer in the agricultural sector. However, it can also function as a high-quality energy carrier. Professor Gunther Kolb, Director of Energy Division and Deputy Institute Director at IMM, explains, ammonia has significant advantages over hydrogen. Hydrogen has, has to be stored at negative 253 degrees Celsius as a liquid or at a pressure of around 700 Bars as a gas. Liquid, liquid ammonia can be stored at a reasonable temperature of negative 33 degrees at standard pressure and 20 plus degrees Celsius at 9 bar. That makes storing and transporting this energy carrier considerably easier and more straightforward. How the fuel cell and catalytic, catalytic converter work. The process for generating electricity from ammonia functions in a similar way to hydrogen based power plants. First, ammonia, NH3, is fed into a fission reaction or reactor where it is split into nitrogen and hydrogen. 75% of the gas consists of hydrogen. A small amount of ammonium, NH3, 100 parts per million, is not converted and left over in the gas stream. Second, nitrogen and hydrogen are fed into the fuel cell and the air is introduced, allowing the hydrogen to burn and form water. This produces electrical energy. However, the hydrogen isn't fully converted in the fuel cell. Around 12% of the hydrogen and some residual ammonia leave the fuel cell uncombusted. This residue is then fed into the catalytic converter developed by Fraunhofer IMM. Here, air is introduced, and the residue comes into contact with a corrugated metal foil coated with a powder powdered layer of catalytic particles that contain platinum. This triggers a chemical reaction. Ultimately, the only end products are water and nitrogen. An optimal reaction process will not even produce environmentally harmful nitrogen oxides. That's, that sounds a little too good to be true, doesn't it, everyone? But, I mean, imagine that. If, they, if you could start upgrading shipping like that... If you could pay a, uh, extra for shipping that ships your goods, carbon neutral or carbon free, <laughs> would you do it? It'd be a, I guarantee you it'd be a point of difference for drop shipping. The research team at IMM are also developing the reactor that contains the catalyst, which functions passively. The, the reactor controls the temperature and gas flow. For example, it preheats the catalyst before the engines even started as it is less efficient when cold. The temperature of the gases that flow through the catalytic converter should probably be around 500 degrees Celsius for the waste gas purification process to be as efficient as possible, explains Colab. Fraunhofer IMM researchers have decades of experience in developing reactors, including catalysts, for a wide variety of applications in the transport and mobility sectors. The mines-based institute has nine test rigs, but purifying waste gas from ammonia fuel cells with a capacity of 2 megawatts is still a technological challenge. We have to develop our existing ammonia-powered fuel cell technology further, and the catalytic converter for a ship is obviously much bigger than that of a normal car, Kolob said. The status of the project. The IMM team is planning to complete an initial small prototype by the end of 2021 to be followed by an actual size prototype by the end of 2022. In the second half of 2023, the first ship 
with an ammonia-powered fuel cell will put out to sea. The Viking Energy, a supply vessel owned by the Norwegian shipping company Edsvesk, that after that, other types of vessels such as cargo ships will be equipped with ammonia-powered fuel cells. So ammonia, ammonia's potential for the future. Ammonia is provided, or the ammonia is provided by Yara, a partnership with Ship FS, FC Consortium. The chemical company currently produces one third of the ammonia used worldwide. Ship FC project uses green ammonia, ammonia, ammonia produced from renew, renewable energy sources. See, this is the thing, everyone. There's no point in, well, there is an advantage from burning renewable fuel as opposed to oil-based fuels if the embodied energy in, well, this, what do you call this? A renewable? It's not really renewable. Anyway, if the embodied energy in this green fuel is less than the oil fuel, then there's, there would be a, an advantage because there's, there's an embodied energy in making all fuels, even in mining oil and processing it. Ship SC is opening up major opportunities from a previously undervalued energy carrier. IMM researcher Gunther Kolob elaborates, We see ammonia not as a direct competitor to hydrogen, but rather as an additional option in the area of sustainable energy. With its storage advantages, that's what I'm really excited about. This environmentally friendly technology for power generation certainly has a role to play. Using it in ships is just the beginning. So... Okay, EU is playing $10 million for the project. So there's a few things here. Let's have a look at this. Uh, what about ammonia? So we've got platinum, ammonia, and who is the company here? Yara. So what about if we want to get into this, well, frankly, buy some <laughs> shares in companies that are producing ammonia? Well, the biggest ammonia supply that I could find in Australia is CSBP. CSBP is a major ammonia supplier in Australia, but I think they import it with a facility that can produce 255,000 tonnes per annum. Underpinned by natural gas, it's delivered through the Dampier to a Bunbury National Gas Pipeline. So they're not really, it's not green ammonia, but still, it's ammonia, it's national gas. Now, who owns it? Well, West Farmers, guys. West Farmers. And what are their shares sitting at? Let's have a look here. They're sitting at $59.57, so they're up slightly. So, yeah, I mean, there you go. Let's have a look. I mean, they're a dividend payer, which isn't too bad. Two-buck dividend, nearly on 60 bucks. So they're profitable business. And uh, what's this? Okay, there you go. They're doing well. Everyone's buying them in the top 40% down. The top people are selling them, and they're buying to align with the target portfolio, and they're selling 35% to take profits. And this is from Self Wealth, where I buy my Australian uh, chess sponsored shares. And if you use the referral link I have down below, we each get five free share trades. So, guys, what do you reckon about this? Let's, let's have a bit of a talk. So, this is encouraging. I think this is certainly a technology to keep our eye on. Uh, it's if if it can actually make a significant impact in shipping i think this is this is going to be real this will have a real impact on pollution in the oceans and in the environment much more than people putting solar panels to win election votes on houses so yeah let let me know your favorite maybe what would we look at ammonia production companies maybe um, platinum mines as well it could be two options to look at, but I'd say that this is we're talking a long term investment here, everyone. You're talking a 10 year period uh, or you know, companies that you get in early, and there could be some news or some hype in this sector. What do you think? Let me know your suggestions and, well, any ammonia companies you know of or have invested in in the comments down below. Guys, thank you all for watching. And, you know, I'd like you to watch this last video I did just about the cost of shipping. There's a whole series I've done of these. And I, I probably have to update it because shipping has come down, but I'll link to the playlist for shipping so you can get an understanding of just how big the sector is. Take care, guys, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.